All right, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm here in New York, and look who I have with me, Sara, who's the CEO of Sequentim. Sara, finally, good to meet you in person, and uh, we just saw such a huge launch by Sequentim last month. Congratulations on Thank that. You. I know we spoke about that. There was a launch party that we did on the yeah. Robert Show, and I was so excited to share. And I've seen the community talking so much about it. I've seen you all doing so much about <laughs> it. Uh, can you tell us a little about how that that's going on? And um, it's like a long shot, right? It's always so much work when you do a launch, right? Yes, it is a lot of work. And thank you so much for having us on your show again. For sure. um, yeah, the launch has been great. And we're iterating every week. We have new features and, features and improvements. We're getting a lot of feedback of users on the system nice. telling us, I really like this. I want you to make this better. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't work, right? And so we've been we've been iterating, continuous improvement, and the team is really fired up. I'm I'm excited as well because uh, when there are, you get the community feedback, nothing like it. I feel yes. that's what you would always want to you know get as much as you all can, and just make it better for the community and for yeah. the leaders out there. So that's fantastic. Today I'm obviously more excited to chat about web scraping in detail, learning more about the AI space. How's that coming together? What are the latest trends that you are seeing in this space? Well, web scraping and AI is a huge topic, right? right. I mean, AI is trained and fed right. from web data, Yeah. Uh, right? And we were marching towards this AGI milestone and everyone was pretty confident that it was gonna happen because of the astronomical improvements that were coming out with the LLMs. Right. But then they started to see the slowdown in those improvements mm. and uh, everyone kind of admitted that the AGI really isn't about to arrive, um, and they're not sure when yeah. it might happen. Um, and everyone's kind of shifted their focus to be actually really aligned with sort of our focus and what we've been doing. So right. it's pretty exciting. So um, this idea that you can build these autonomous intelligent agents and that on top of suites and, uh, you know, of, of these intelligent agents talking to one another, you can build mm -hmm. incredible intelligence on top of that, which is great. I think that it's sort of taking a little bit of the hype out of uh, the messaging and the industry and getting much more real yeah. because it is real hard work True. Right, to create these intelligent agents. We came out after ChatGPT was launched um, at the end of 2023 and we came out with our first intelligent agents agent in the spring. Nice. Um, sorry, uh, of 2023, and it uh, it's risk alerts. It's you know it was pretty simple at the time. Um, it's basically risk alerts alerting. You know you can upload you know whatever the d data vendors are that your company depends on. Right. Right. Um, and then we'll tell you if there's a cyber breach or um, a uh, you know or a fraud or litigation, any kind of negative sentiment lawsuit mm -hmm. in the press. Um, and it just runs in autonomously. It's like incredible, but it took us, you know, several inter iterations to get it not to a place where we were confident that it was not going to hallucinate. We asked right. it the same kind of questions in so many different ways, and wow. we had, you know, we had to work hard to exactly. get it to be really reliable and trustworthy and cost-effective, not too expensive, right? Because mm. the AI can really, um, yeah. really cost a lot. Um, so anyway, so. At learning from that and on the heels of that, we've been continuing to explore AI and and it's sort of what it can do for us in web scraping. And, and as these improvements are coming out, we're actually able to do more and more. It's pretty exciting. The vision AI is something that we've been using a lot lately and it's working really well. Nice. Um, so, and, and what we're doing is we're, you know, we have this point and click platform. Right. We've talked about it many yes, times. Yes, exactly. Um, but basically, uh, we, you can create template commands that will go out and do, you know, whatever the the AI augmentation is that you want to do. Right. Um, and and that's how we're sort of bringing AI in mm -hmm. without degrading the trust. Nice. Right. So we you have you still have that lineage every step of the way. How everything is working every step of the way. You have the audit trails. You have all the governance, um, and you have all the data validation and all the air detection and checking mm -hmm. around, you know, the introduction of the AI. Nice. Um, but you can really, really add tremendous power to your scraping without adding enormous cost. Yeah. 
So yeah. that's that's a very important point in terms of you know the cost. When I talk to enterprise leaders, that's what I've been kind of hearing as well. Yeah, it's fine. We kind of you know obviously uh, getting to a stage where implementation can happen, but then what about the cost? Yeah. It's again, which is a, like a big challenge uh, yeah. about where obviously last year we were talking about having AI into the game, but then uh, it would ideally help us scale things with a you know with a better ROI. But today we see the cost going up. And if you kind of saw, uh, looking at that problem, I think that is something which is a very huge problem out there for the larger enterprise enterprises and those enterprise leaders who are working on it. So that's fantastic. Um, kind of also wanting to learn, learn a little about, you know, avoiding the pitfalls in AI with low code. How does that work? I know Sequentum does it pretty well. I've obviously seen the platform. We've spoken about it. Mm -hmm. But anything that you would like to share with our audience about that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the thing about AI is you want to use it at the right in in the right places because mm -hmm. again, like it's still very expensive. Nice. Um, and so, yep. right. So, for example, let's say you want to do hotel bookings, right? And you want to go out to a very very high blocking site, mm -hmm. right? And you want to get, you know, tens of millions of records every day, right? Because you're doing you're monitoring hotel prices, for example. Right. Um, but you also want to see the difference between an aggregator site, the price on an aggregator site, and the price on the hotel site itself. Exactly. Right? That's a nice little niche application of AI. Mm. Right? Because you have to kind of stitch together, right? The, so the, the aggregator site, we will definitely use the old school scraping, right? That mm. just scales to the nines, is completely reliable, Right, such a workhorse handles the blocking, mm -hmm. handles the infinite scroll, handles all the things that AI can't handle. Yep. Right. Um, but then going out to those individual hotel st sites, you can use an LLM to sort of stitch together. You know, is this hotel room uh, really? Uh, you know, uh, maybe the like, maybe it's a complicated situation where the name of the hotel is in a different language mm -hmm. in that country yep. than it is on the aggregator site. Maybe the name of the hotel room, you know, whether it's accessible or a king bed or whatever, maybe there's cool. some, some funny things there, mm. right? So you can use AI to kind of stitch it together and come up with an e even more powerful data set. Nice. So combining nice. the aggregator site data that you're collecting at scale with no AI. Right in the old school methods, but then using the AI to augment it even more with that just-in-time fresh data um, from the sites themselves. So there's interesting applications that you can do now that we really couldn't do even like six months ago. It wasn't good enough. Um, and you know, in terms of AI-led navigation, we haven't been impressed. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we're seeing like there's a lot of different ways to use AI navigation. You can do things like send the HTML up to the LLM, which is way too expensive, right? But you just it's a non-starter. Right. You exactly. Can't do it. Like you can do one or two <laughs> pages, but you can't do millions of pages a day way like true. that. It's, yeah. it's eighty thousand dollars a day or something. Um, not going to work. Um, but some things that are working are are going up and using AI to generate um, commands. Right, mm -hmm. and and that's that's interesting for us because actually our agents on our platform, when we write all of our agents, they're a simple text file that's human friendly, and it has everything in it, including the infinite scroll and how to deal with the blocking and all of those things that AI on its own can't do. Right. So that we think is the next phase for us with navigating using AI. Um, but affordably, right? Because we'd have to train our models, we'd have to run them locally, right? So that's kinda, right. That's 2025. Yeah, for I'm, us. I'm excited about that. Talking about future, I'm kind of also interested to learn a little about you know the marketplace. How are you kind of looking at that? How is Quantum kind of looking at that when it comes to web scraping and AI? Yeah, so marketplace, there's two different things that you can take to a marketplace with Sequentum. So one is just the data sets, mm -hmm. right? And right now, like, you don't need to use our data, our, you know, like, we don't need to stand up a data marketplace. Right. There's, we have tons of partners that have that. You can write directly to their marketplaces. And and so that's a way to monetize immediately and, and literally launch your own business as a data creator. Yeah. Right? Using this low-code point-and-click, nice. start in minutes, go to market. 
the other way that you can go to market is by um, basically renting these agents. So like that aggregator site that we were talking about, the hotel aggregator site, very mm. popular. You know, everyone wants this data. If they're in the hotel industry, if they're in the tourism industry, there's a lot of use cases for this data. Right. Um, so if a creator wants to build a business, they can jump on our platform within minutes, build the templates for these high value sites, and they can rent those templates and support the templates. Mm. And then our customers can pull those templates in knowing that they're supported by someone who is obsessed with making sure that that agent is the best possible. Yeah. The best it can be. And I'm kind of curious to learn a little about, you know, also the monetization of AI. How does that happen? What What are your thoughts around that? I've been kind of now hearing about a little about that, but what's your thought process? Well, it's kind of infinite, right? If you're talking about, uh, if you're, if you, if you're, I think the, the, the sort of industry is saying maybe there isn't AGI, <laughs> right? Maybe actually what we're doing is building one intelligent agent after another, yeah. and then they learn about each other and they work together and they build a whole community of intelligent agents, and then on top of that is where you get this incredible value. Yeah. Right? I didn't say incredible intelligence. I said incredible <laughs> value. But like each one of those intelligent agents is essentially uh, a unit of a nugget of value. Right. Like the, like the risk alerts that we that we built, um, it's just been running autonomously mm -hmm. for now for you know over, I guess, 18 months, 20 months, and it's it's just generating value. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you have so you can build those on our platform, and you can launch them, and you can you know, every agent has an API. So yeah. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. If you want to launch an agentic framework that has that incorporates web data from very high blocking sites and sites that no AI can get to affordably, reliably, or in a trustworthy way, you can build it on our platform. That's awesome. Uh, one more quick question around, you know, obviously the clients with the customers and the community. What have you been hearing in terms of, you know, after the launch, what have what has been their experience uh, and what are they most excited about when it comes to, you know, the cloud? I think they're just kind of aghast that you can do all of this uh, scraping on our platform just kind of out of the box. Exactly. So uh, very high blocking sites like, um, you know, Shopee, for example, mm. right? I mean, it's like all of a sudden we were getting all these requests for Shopee. Apparently all of these other uh, vendors, you know, we have a lot of, uh, partners who are proxy vendors. I don't want to say um, that they don't have a good product. We depend on them and we love um, yep. what they do for us and we believe strongly in their technology. Um, but they've also come out with scraping platforms and they can't handle the blocking, mm. right? All of this new blocking. And so they're literally funneling this traffic to us, which is great. We never had this before. Exactly. You know, yeah. the cloud. All of a sudden, we've got it's you know, a good problem to have for sure. We've got these APIs, and we have all of this traffic coming through. It's 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 nice. It was a surprise for us, but I think it was also a surprise for them because I don't think they quite realized um, how incredibly powerful our antibody exactly capabilities are. Hmm, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, very nice insights. Uh, one more quick question is about, you know, obviously companies and the challenges that they face. So how can companies overcome challenges integrating website data into larger data analysis operations? Any thoughts around that? Well, I mean, everyone is using this mission critical data. Right. Right. I mean, I, I mean, it's every industry is depending on this data. I saw some chatter on LinkedIn today. <laughs> you know, there was this market research report that was released and it said that the, you know, the, the growth rate in, in the industry of alternative data, yeah. right? Alternative being, you know, non-traditional data, not, it, not yeah. the data that you have in earnings reports, but alternative data most, you know, I guess maybe 40 or 50% of that is web data. Hmm. Um, but it was saying that the growth rate in in the alt data industry was over 50%. <laughs> and I weighed in and I was like, wait a minute, that's only one of these market research reports. Here's another one, 64% uh, right, by, exactly. by the time 2030 rolls around. I mean, these numbers are astronomical. I mean, I think the assumption is that, you know, really everyone is jumping on AI to build mm. productivity and capability and to augment their teams, right. not replace humans, 
right? I don't actually, I don't see that. Yeah. Uh, maybe, um, may, maybe in some places, but right now it, it seems like this needs to be, there needs to be a human in the loop yep. uh, for most of these things. Very um, important point, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I personally am getting tremendous value. I, I use, you know, I use ChatGPT for requirements analysis and research nice. um, for yeah. all kinds of things. Um, so, you know, I can and I can see with our customers, they're um, they're just getting trim. It's snowballing. Yeah, the value is just snowballing. Love it, love it. Uh, I think uh, that's the power of Sequentum as well. I've kind of you know obviously seen the work that y'all have done over the years, and you'll continue to do that, continue to help the community, continue to strive, and make sure where enterprises uh, are more confident about using Sequentum. So that's awesome. One last question for you, Sarah, before we wrap up. Um, if folks want to reach out, learn more about Sequentim, learn more about you know where they can follow you, uh, come and ask questions, which is the best place? I mean, just start at sequentum.com. Sign okay. up for a free trial. Nice. Point and click, create your first agent in minutes. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, there's chatbots. We have people 24-7 standing by. Nice. Right? If there's any particular feedback or requests, you can open a ticket. You can send an email. Nice. Right? Cloud support at sequentum.com. Um, you know, of course, if, if you want to get an enterprise package, you can contact sales at sequentum.com. Okay, that's fantastic. And LinkedIn should be a good place for LinkedIn them to connect to you. LinkedIn is always a great place, yes. Yeah. Okay, Very fantastic. Very there. I'm going to share those links with our audience as well. But thanks for uh, sharing all the great insights. It's always such a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, good to be in your town, New York. You're welcome to Yeah, me. thank you very much. <laughs> yes, here, here we, we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, Sarah, once again chatting for chatting on The Robert Show. And uh, we'll keep the conversation going. Appreciate it. Sounds great. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye.